period of time. Generally speaking, you can't really take the internet de down. The protocols on which it was built were specifically designed so you couldn't take it down, right? So this network of computers is something that makes um, uh, Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency platform possible, okay? So, um, so now I've mentioned crypto, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. Um, and we get into cryptography. Now cryptography has been around a long time. And strangely enough, again, because I've been involved in it a long time, um, it was a very dodgy subject in technology. You know, there was a lot of uh, export controls, you could get arrested, it was a very scary thing to be involved with. And when you work with software that used cryptography, there was always a concern that you might actually breach some form of a law, okay? And end up in trouble. But basically, the people behind Bitcoin um, ignored that, okay? And so they just started to use it. But there were some other things that happened as well. Um, this, this thing called the Wazanar Arrangement. Um, again, I'm not quite sure of the history of uh, how the laws changed around cryptography, but uh, it seems like lots of people, lots of uh, nations, etc., must have got together at some point and said, um, there's a lot of benefits to this stuff, so we need to relax our approach to cryptography. Um, electronic signatures are very well established. Okay, there's lots of uh, laws and acts and everything that explain uh, uh, electronic signatures. But actually, the areas in red, I think, are still a little bit vague. So the whole concept of encryption, um, and then I believe with the new technology, with behaviour being related to encryption. So that's like something may or may not work unless someone has the, uh, the controls over this thing so no one else can change it. It's a bit like having a bomb. It can't be diffused uh, unless you've got the, 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 the cryptographic solution to be able to access it. And nobody's really gone as far as thinking about behavior yet. yet. But with the internet of things, we really do have to think about it, okay? So those two areas, encryption and behavior, I could still consider those munitions. Okay, so that, and that was the main uh, legal category of cryptography uh, was as a munition, right? Just like a nuclear bomb. So, so um, cryptography. So that was that was in the name. The next thing is consensus um, with a transfer of value, like in Bitcoin, ten bits or something goes from one party to another. Uh, of course, the whole reason uh, Bitcoin works is because when that record is written, it's completely undisputable. undisputable. It can't be spent twice. It can't be um, subverted in any way. Okay? And there's this mechanism called consensus, uh, which is a load of technology algorithms around the cryptography, which enables that to take place. So consensus is an important ingredient and something quite hard and something you have to really understand. To get, to get further in this whole space of blockchain. At this point, there's still no such thing as blockchain, by the way. Right? So the next thing is, um, to have people behave well in this network, there has to be a reward. Right? So there's something called mining, which is uh, when people join the network uh, to actually help safeguard the integrity of the facts on the network, and they're rewarded by getting a small bit of the bitcoins when they actually certify these transactions as being uh, true. Okay, so there's a reward, and that rewards good behaviour. And again, there's all kinds of uh, computer science behind that. Okay, but then we start. Then then we get all the the issues with Silk Road and uh, the dark web and, and the all politics and government trying to say this is really dodgy. You know, we've got to shut this stuff down. But it was too late. Really. Um, so there's a lot of political issues. I just, I'm just spelling out one, and that is every sovereign state controls its currency, and everyone is scared to death of losing control of its currency, okay? So currencies are known as fiat, um, and uh, so the threat to fiat is a really a serious political uh, concern, okay? So about that time, uh, when they realized that the way the technology worked could have a lot of benefits, they needed to use different terminology so somehow they came up with this concept of blockchain, right? which was still a bit opaque, people didn't understand it. So um, when, when we got to the next tier, where Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are all about a value, some finite concept, and two parties agreeing that they're going to transfer a value. This Butelin, he came up with this idea of Ethereum, and instead of it being a value, it's now some logic. 
It's what they call a smart contract expressed in code. So that's two parties agreeing that they um, will uh, you know, meet their obligations with regards to this logic. Right? That's really where Ethereum is different to something like a cryptocurrency on Bitcoin. So I'll rattle through. So blockchain, that was still ugly. Um, so financial services companies, law firms, all got involved. And they thought blockchain, well, they don't understand that either. So now they call it distributed ledgers. So they must have spent at least two years thinking about a name that they prefer rather than understanding the technology. And they came up with distributed ledgers, right? DLT. Um, so after that, I'll wrap along. So you've got economics. Uh, with these smart contracts, how it all works, there's loads of economic concepts, in particular app coins, which is where if you use our app, uh, you actually need to buy a currency to use it, otherwise it won't work. Okay? Um, so there's economic uh, opportunities, then we get to legal, and then we get to smart contracts, and that's where we are. So we're leveraging the smart contract capability uh, in Zonified, and then about 12 years ago, I read this book called Cody's Law by a guy called Larry Essig, Wow, that's fantastic. And I can't believe it, that's where we are now. Code is law. There's a lot of disputes, a lot of you know, legal professionals say, no, nothing's changed, it's all exactly the same. I think it is different, okay? So code is law, right? So I've now got, how many minutes have we got? One, because the other class is waiting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> so I rather than these, these, I'll just give two of these then. So I've made these as kind of statements. Okay, <coughs> the technology sometimes, th things about the technology is counterintuitive. So data stored on every computer in the world is safer than on one. It's kind of counterintuitive, right? But then if you come down, privacy, it's safer to give up your privacy. I mean, we spoke to lots of people there. They always say, well, I don't do anything wrong. I don't mind being on CCTV everywhere. Okay, I don't mind giving up my location because it's so useful. Okay, but this is, this is privacy. So these are a load of statements that I've made and that hopefully you'll just be the deck yeah. so people can have a look at that. Uh, I, I, thought, I thought they'd be interesting discussion points, yeah. right? Yeah. You ever debate yeah. what blockchain is. Yeah. I've got a load of reading on there, which is to useful background information for you. Yeah. And, uh, and then this is the ideological stuff that I think is really useful reading. Yes. Very useful yeah. reading. Yeah. 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 So there's the emails, you can get me on Twitter at Intuition or, or the business at Zone of Trust. Okay, so that's 